Yes, yes, yes. How's everybody doing? I'm okay. Ah, Jesus. I, I caught a little bit of, uh, I don't know what the hell I caught really. Got prescription for mild bronchitis, but here I am now a week later. Not dead. Not bad. Ooh wee. It's funny, I uh, <clears throat> haven't done, I haven't really recorded videos. I mean, like I could say ever, like intentionally. And um, in the beginning, it's a bit like, ah, fuck it, who's going to care? Uh, I'm not going to keep this up, blah, 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 blah. But obviously, data, I'm like, okay, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. So uh, I made it into uh, basically a routine. And so now that I uh, took a little time off with this uh, sickness, uh, I kind of miss it. And I was like, wow, uh, it kind of became a part of my almost personality or like, routine for lack of a worse word because this is really the it's really the right word to say and i think in a way that is go, uh, mission accomplished because if you want something to stick make it a routine make it so that when you're not doing it you're uneasy about it you feel that something is missing so you are not performing uh efficiently well actually that's not what i wanted to talk about um I've had this um, discussion uh, in my head. Sometimes, you know, it's also kind of pretty easy to um, confuse the topics uh, that are worthwhile and meaningful versus just something that is pertinent to me, like at this time. Like, let's say I could be out here making a video about trying to stay healthy, but I'd know that uh, deep down I would be just reacting to what was. Uh, the um, most immediate attention, uh, nugget of the attention that I uh, am able to hold on to. But thankfully, uh, again, that's not what I'm going to be talking about. So what the hell am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about something that um, <clears throat> I think is relevant besides me. So if I was to drop dead or catch COVID or something, well this would still hold this opinion and that is the need to have technical education alongside your creative uh, artistic and humanitarian disciplines and I would say even vice versa uh, since I started with the um, artsy and humanitarian uh, humanities I should say not humanitarian that's uh, uh, bad word. Uh, that's cute. So yeah, since I started with that one, I'd say that there is more. Um, if I was to to weigh them, to balance them out, I wouldn't quite quite go 50-50, but I wouldn't really go like 70-30 either. So I would say that if you're um, majoring in humanities, arts, these soft disciplines, or you should say soft skills and uh, it's like a 60%, 55% um, uh, what should I say, like necessary that you, you take the um, you, you do some technical discipline whereas when you're doing, you start off with technical discipline I would say that like you could do you could get away with just doing that one but you really hurt as well You be that's how you kind of become like drones so let me collect my uh, let me collect my train of thought here and say if you want to become an artist, painter, social worker, uh, sociologist, philosopher, actor, director, any one of these things that are obviously not even close to being hard sciences, you should for sure in my opinion have some kind of technical skill it could be carpentry it could be programming it could be chemistry biology it needs to be something that you can leverage rather uh, momentarily and efficiently before your actual career takes off I don't need to tell you how many failed artists there are and how many starving artists there are and it's almost like 
the tra uh, part of the process that you have to struggle through um, being like uh, underpaid or underappreciated apprentice to somehow um, make it. I don't like it for a variety of reasons. I think it's a very abusive uh, sector, uh, sectors, and uh, a lot of people don't make it to the top. You could be out there running Starbucks for these big executives in big offices, and you can be so proud of yourself. You could be spending your last dime, uh, you know, your paycheck to paycheck on dressing the part, but they'll never look at you like you're one of them, if you ain't one of them. If you ain't like a really gifted and uh, highly desirable artist that they can't really exploit as well, um, meaning that they can't rip you off for your ideas and you don't just give them uh, you know, your, your scripts or your drawings basically for peanuts. Um, and then you have very little chance of making anything but peanuts. But there's this, this, this goes, I think, far beyond just making a living and um, supporting yourself. Because I think you should be able to support yourself. No matter how much you love your craft and no matter how deeply involved you are in it, I think that you should be able to stand on your own two feet. And not only that, I think you should be also of help to your family and friends around you. You can't do that if you just zero in on writing novels, if you just want to be a blogger, if you want to be a fuck. If all you're doing is modeling, if you want to be a writer, an actor, you should definitely pursue that with everything you got. But man, everything you got is not doesn't mean 100% of your time. You should have a technical skill. And that technical skill will only help you in edging out your opponent, uh, yeah, your competition, I should say. You will have a better, a, you'll, have, you'll be more mobile, you'll be more versatile, you'll understand how to put pieces together. There's no really innocent, successful people, I think. And that's one of the, um, one of the delusions we have, uh, maybe as artists or creators, is that Oh, if I'm just wholehearted, if I'm pure at heart and I am um, honest, earnest, uh, I swear. Uh, the, um, the audience will recognize that and they'll, uh, they'll support me. How are they going to recognize that? How are you going to reach appeal to all these people? Do you think you're the only nice guy out there or nice girl? Do you think there is no one else who's uh, just as the kind of a person? Or maybe you're a bit conceited and think you're the best. Again, this isn't to discourage anyone. I really hope that you spend the most of your energy pursuing, taking the risk on something you really want to do and that you're really good at. But if you don't have plan B, well, you're going to have to prepare for some... Fuck, what's the brand of that vitamin C? God damn it. Uh, joke, joke ruined, okay? Um, yeah. Yeah, you need to be a well-balanced individual. And uh, this is something that schools try to do, to be honest. Uh, for all the hate I give them, I think that uh, they're, they have a right opinion about making you take electives at school. So you, you have a lot of young kids, young adults coming into school and they're like oh I'm gonna do double major triple minor I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna do biochemical engineering my major a double major and also I'm gonna have uh, uh, artificial intelligence schematics for the um, uh, newly devised materials also I'm gonna do a French and English and Ugandan literature fucking burnout at the end of the first to second year they're like well I'm actually doing communications now I, I didn't like that other stuff. Hey, no shit. Hey, no shit. Still be ambitious. Uh, but at the same time, there are a lot of people who think they're math geniuses and for whom the status, especially from their family, is, is having this big math degree. And it is hard to have a math degree. But you become, if you don't have a vision and if you don't have a human context for applying your math, you're just 
you're going to be treated so badly for the amount of work you put in. Man, I don't even want to tell you why. Because I've worked, I, I work in um, tech in the tech field, right? So I started off as this kind of artsy person. I also had a tech side to me and I really wanted to kind of participate in both. And I could tell you that there's bad sides to every coin. Man, you could legitimately be one of the smartest developers or engineers in the room. But there, if you are not a well-rounded individual, if you don't have the soft skills like the um, courage, the uh, leadership, vision, uh, it doesn't even have to be leadership because you don't have to lead. You can just at least be assert assertive and um, uh, communication skills. And if you're very shy and, and you're a pushover, you will be treated like such piece of crap uh, you will be surprised. You're gonna you're gonna hate your job because you're just gonna go to work. They're gonna tell you do this and get the fuck out of here. But they'll fully depend on you. But they'll know how to control you. You need to read literature. You need to understand how these things happen over over time over people. Sometimes it's exaggerated in literature, but these things definitely happen. I can guarantee you that much. And at the same time, you wanna. Have something else to talk about other than your main craft, your vocation. You don't want to just go in there. You can't hold up a conversation in a room uh, where it's not, let's say, fully just developers, scientists, engineers, biochemists. You can't just talk about like the attract, uh, thermodynamics or uh, uh, arrays or something like that or like, uh, what's it called, binary trees. Those are not, not even talks about those probably anymore. Like you have to be able to talk about things in society I guess it's kind of easy now because you can talk about net, what's on Netflix. Like that seems to be the center of everyone's conversation. But you should be able to understand parts of literature, parts of um, even like shows like uh, on Netflix. They all uh, harken back on things that the, the writers learned during their schooling and their uh, upbringing, and whenever and probably they're inspired by a lot of the things that they. Uh, write about. Um, I mean, how many horror stories has Frankenstein um, inspired? How many things are based on Shakespeare? Uh, and e even in games, there are so many references, and it's, it becomes like cool when you get to pick up on those. And when, when you strike a few chords about um, with, with other people about this kind of stuff, then you will know that uh, you have a good, gen a, a really nice conversation. Rather than just going in, doing your job. Oh, I'm just going to be a writer. I'm just going to go to Starbucks. I'm going to be on my laptop. I'm just going to write, 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 write. And I'm going to try to like sell the script. Uh, no, as a writer, you also want to be a bit more technical. You want to learn how to use, uh, I don't know, markdown of, uh, software. You want to learn how to protect your um, uh, writings. You want to learn how to copyright them, especially nowadays on blockchain. Uh, you want to be able to operate the computer better. You might also want to have, you might want to write about topics that are technical. You can't write about fucking, th this is when you can tell it. It's like a cheap, trashy uh, uh, show where like it, the tech makes no freaking sense in it, but the writer got, to, got it in his hand that they do. Uh, and when you're not writing or if you're not like all writing from um, dust till dawn, maybe you can, uh, I don't know, build a table. <laughs> Shit, man, nowadays you can sell stuff on Etsy. You can build one table, make 300 bucks, sell a couple of those, and you're not bad. You can uh, maybe pay the rent or some shit like that with roommates, of course. But the, the main idea here is a tunnel vision. The blinders are good for horses when you're running a race, but you're not always running a race, right? Like we hear this conversation like it's a um, marathon, not a sprint. You got to go the distance. And if you want to go the distance, man, you got to take the blinders off. You got to see the big picture. You have to kind of plan ahead. And if you don't have plan B, you better start drinking some vitamin C. I'll never get this joke, but it's only going to help you out. You're going to think in the beginning that it's a waste of your time, that you're better than this, this is not what you want to do. All of these are very normal uh, reactions of aversion. You know, this is how you react to how the brain tries to get you to do less work than it really wants to do. 
And at the same time, you also have to be observant. Like, let's say, how long have you been doing whatever it is you're doing? Have you been, let's say, writing scripts for five years? Have you been drawing for three years? Have you been um, uh, acting and haven't gotten anywhere past commercials for four and a half? You know, you got to understand that for every year, you're like maybe a couple behind because you're not getting any younger but at the same time some of these disciplines like in the arts especially they might have early retirement ages like writing does not maybe acting does not depends on the kind of personality you are sports do and um esports competitive stuff does but in general it's uh it's a worthwhile use of your time to have both a technical and a creative and um, artistic side. Uh, You should have a strong suit, of course, and you should always nurture that. But you must always supplant or supplement your um, your skill set with something that is outside of your comfort zone. Hey, you think math is useless? Wait till you become a successful um, creator and have to do taxes maybe or you'll find out just how much you're getting ripped off by your whatever agent. Uh, hey, you! all you want to do is sit in front of a computer and code. You'll never get the, uh, you'll never get beyond maybe like senior developer or whatever. You'll just be looked at as a freaking calculator and uh, you will have people getting up climbing the the ladder who are clearly inferior to you but they're doing things that you clearly cannot cannot manage people you can talk to people you can't command respect you can't uh, take risks and so on and so on I say give it a shot at the very least well Time to get up that hill. Look at that. Oof. Man. Cheers, guys.